It was not that often that the Carolina Panthers actually win trades. We know they're taking a lot of L's over the past few years, offloading assets in certain trades, but this might be one of the first ones and one of the bigger ones in recent history with them acquiring Deontay Johnson and pretty much all they had to give up was Dante Jackson, who they were going to cut anyway in a late round pick swap. In this video today, we're going to talk about what Johnson brings to the Panthers, how he can benefit Bryce Young in this offense and where I just think, see these things working out. And we're starting right now. Yo, what up, though? It's Aaron Duncan with the Necessary Blunt the Sports Talk. Recap analysis of the Panthers is what I do. Going into deep dives of free agencies, I'm on top of news and the draft process as well. So make sure you are subscribed because Deontay Johnson is the type of guy that I wanted to definitely do a deep dive in. And he was just getting this guy this cheap is low risk, high reward. Now, we there may be a reason, obviously, why the Steelers got rid of him. And we'll talk about it a little bit later. But these are the type of risks that the Carolina Panthers need to take in rebuilding some people are obsessed with just tanking and using a bunch of draft picks some people are obsessed with spending a bunch of money you have to do a combination of both by trading and acquiring low risk high reward assets like this drafting players well of course and then spending quality money in free agency and i think that's what the panthers have done offensively this offseason thus far i think the last trade break that the panthers got where they had to pay pennies to get a good player it's probably stefan gilmore when they gave up a six round pick and traded with him from the patriots and of course we know what he did for us that season but unfortunately we didn't retain his services regardless they now get deontay johnson on the final year of his deal so not only did they not give up much for a trade his salary is only $10 million, so in that final year of their deal, he should come in motivated, having a fresh start, I think should be positives for him. And it was actually right on time for the Panthers because even I was considering them maybe acquiring uh, Jerry Judy, who was a fifth and a sixth that went uh, to the Browns there, but, but even he's not as good as Deontay Johnson. And obviously, T. Higgins was the guy that was apple of our eye, but the price was going to be probably a second round pick and a big salary to go along with it. And the Panthers need to keep the money they have as much as possible right now and keep their second round pick. So getting Deontay Johnson is a very, very happy medium, getting a good player with potential to be even better for low cost. So what's up with Deontay Johnson's game? He's a bona fide route technician. I mean, this man wins at all three levels. I mean, when it comes to just getting open, this guy is a specialist. ESPN did wide receiver analytics. And as you can see, this guy, and since 2019, since he's been in the league, he is the number one one guy in the league in terms of his open score for them that's incredible even last year when he had some of a somewhat of a down year he was 12th in the league and if you compare that to some of the panthers receivers that they had with adam thielen being the number one guy being ranked number 31 and then some of the other receivers that started for them being way towards the bottom almost rock bottom Getting a guy like Deontay Johnson will be just what the doctor ordered for Bryce Young and this Panthers offense. So you may be wondering, like, if he's this open and has an open score better than some of the greats in the league, why isn't he a better receiver? Well, he's had some productive years. When he played with Ben Roethlisberger, he had a couple productive years. He has crossed 1,000 yards before his career. He did miss some games last year, but still ended up with 700 yards. And what's going on in Pittsburgh has been completely toxic. And is he blameless in that scenario? Not at all. But I think a lot of the frustration that he has has to do with their lack of stability at quarterback since Ben Roethlisberger has been gone and just a horrible offensive system. I mean, of course, lack of effort on the field and not making blocks and, of course, pouting and being mad on the field is not something that's ever excusable. And we've heard rumors of him getting into it with teammates in the locker room. We've heard him in the film room having comments and talking bad about certain uh, system and plays being called that – Really can't make an excuse for it either, but it seems like other players were doing the same thing. It just gets put on the limelight because of Deontay Johnson. I've heard that George Pickens was doing similar things. He even did it more in a public setting, but nobody really criticized George Pickens. And people also stick him with this drop narrative, but in 2020, he had a horribly, horribly historic drop record there but this past he's only had two drops with a drop rate of 3.8 so he's trending in the right direction and i think him not being able to catch is just something that's been overblown that's stuck to him that people kind of read into too much so with him having more opportunities and presumably going to be in a better more functional passing system of dave canales with bryce young at quarterback i'm expecting big things from deontay johnson so let's go ahead and get into the tape and let me just show you what makes this guy so so good so his first point is going to be at the bottom of the screen he's going to be pressed up on the line and and 
Uh, he's going to be on the line of scrimmage. And this is a lot of times he plays that X position at times where he's on the single side by himself. Sometimes it's the tight end to his side and he's off the line playing Z. But regardless, when he's one-on-one in press coverage, he's so quick at the line, it's hard for guys to get hands on him. He's not going to get a target here, which happened a lot in Pittsburgh. It's probably why he got pissed off a lot. But he's going to cook this corner off the line. Watch the foot fire and the inside move that he takes on this guy. But boom, sets him up. Look at that space created the line of scrimmage. He looks back at the guy because he knows, like, hey, man, I got you. I didn't get the ball because it was a screen, but look, I got you. So look at him about the line. Squares him up with a little hop step and then put a little foot fire, jabs it inside, boom. Look at that space created right there. The cornerback gets off balance because once he look, thinks he's going to outside release, as soon as he gets him to open up to make him think he's going on the go route, he comes back inside and crosses him over. Nice release there. So let's get to a play where he actually does get the ball off of press coverage. And this guy's going to come up late to the line of scrimmage. And he's going to do the same thing on the slant route. Boom. Jabs him inside. Easy catch. Makes the man miss. Gets up field. And the yards at the catch, the only way that Deontay Johnson knows to do. And this is where people, this is why fans get so mad at him. Because instead of just catching this and getting up field and even just diving, He'll go backwards sometimes and try to get yak. And uh, he's a little bit slighter of a receiver, so he doesn't really want to get hit all the time. But uh, I don't know. That's what fan pisses fans off. But I still want to focus on this release because this was just cash right here. Watch the foot fire off the line of scrimmage. Like I said, sets him up with a rocker step. Boom, boom, boom. Crosses him over. Uses his hands to swipe the guy's hands off. Like once you sell it outside, you get that guy leaning to the right. That corner lean to the right just a little bit. Look at that little lean. That step to the right. Step to the right by the corner. That's all he needed to do. Come back inside, wide open, catches the ball. Like I said, you would like him to just get north to south, get a couple yards to get a first down. He decides to cut back and bow around, try to pick up a block, but uh, it is what it is. But hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date on more Panthers news and updates. I'm going to be trying to break more film breakdowns on these free agents. And, of course, draft process is coming up, so I have content covering that as well. So if you're really enjoying this and you want to see more, subscribe down below. It only takes you two seconds. I appreciate that. All right, he's going to be at the top of the screen in the bunch formation. This is what I'm talking about with, again, with leverage. Just like that last rep, he's going to run another out route right here, but the corner is clearly going to be on the outside leverage, outside shade on him. So how do you win? He's going to run a B line directly at him. Instead of running like a square, completely straight line, and then box out like you see on the video game or Madden, he's going to be a football player and run directly at him. So it's going to be more like an angle out versus just a straight up 90 degree perpendicular lines. So watch how he aims directly at the corner as he's running that to get back leverage. Look, he doesn't run a straight line. The guy that's on the hash mark, he runs a straight line. Deontay Johnson runs at an angle at him. He can't get all the way out there because that corner is still fading out. But as soon as that corner opens up them hips, break. That's open. And that's the thing about, about Deontay Johnson. He sells everything that looks vertical, so it makes the cornerback have to open his hips up to try to feel like it's a go route. He's not even that fast. I think he ran a 4-5 coming out, but he's able to run and make these cornerbacks open up their hips to think that, look, he's turning and going. But as soon as the guy opens his hips, boom, throttle it down, run that out route create that space for the quarterback to put it on you perfect 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 this is well executed by him just smooth easy boom in and out those breaks get their head around nice pitch and catch i just want to continue to show him working in the intermediate he's going to be up top he's going to run that curl and it's a horrible pass and some people may question his effort on this because he probably could have elevated for it but he's around three defenders you expose yourself and your ribs going all the way up in the air with a, with a linebacker closing in on you fast. He made a business decision, but I want you to see how he worked to get open there. And this is this is the same thing. He's going to attack the leverage, make the cornerback open up his hips, make everything look like you're going vertical and going on the go route. Look, he out, he angles outside. Look, look at that leverage. The guy is outside of him. He's about a yard from the light grass or whatever. This guy's pretty much almost on that line for the light grass, dark grass. So he's outside shade on him, and Deontay's going to angle out to make him feel like, oh, he's running the go route down the sideline. So as soon as that cornerback opens up his hips, throw on the brakes. Look, the cornerback, look, he's, he's backpedaling first, but as soon as he opens up those hips, throw on the brakes. Because when he opens up those hips, you can come out of your brakes faster than he can come out of his brakes when – He's doing that because then he's had to turn his body completely around. If he's still facing forward, all he has to do is break, come out of his break and run forward. But if you throw him on as soon as this guy opens up, boom, get around, you're open. But except bad pass, he sailed it. This is wide open in the NFL. You got to hit that.
you got to hit that, but Kenny Pickett letting him down. But the execution of the route, like I said, just making him open up his hips, selling, making everything look vertical. That's the common denominator on Deontay's routes. Makes everything look like he's going vertical, so cornerbacks get scared. So here's another rep in the intermediary where he's going against the cornerback, but the corner's going to do a good job anticipating this route when he runs this comeback, but Deontay's able to put himself in position to make this catch. And this, let's talk about it right here because, once again, Deontay sells that vertical route. Like I said, he's a good salesman. I like to call him a salesman because he sells the vertical every time. Time and he's gonna snap it off but this time the corner is key in the quarterback and he sees that he's about to uh, jump out so they both speed turn look at that speed turn by the cornerback speed turn to get his head around he actually does a good job staying in that hip pocket but what Deontay does is work back to the football because look he breaks he comes out of his break at the 41 but it comes downhill and he doesn't end up catching it to the 38 but that was the difference. Had he stayed flat, the corner could have broke it up or the corner could have just got a pick, something like that, and could have undercut it. But the fact that he worked back to the football, he's able to put himself in position. Look, right now they're side by side, and the cornerback's actually outside of him. But the fact that he keeps coming downhill, adjusts to the football while it's in the air, full extension, catches that pass when it's contested. Look, man, he ain't always got to get wide open to come up with passes. He can make contested catches too. Watch this from this angle, man. You can see how tight the contest was by this cornerback. It's actually a pretty good pass by Pickett. Good adjustment by Deontay Elevate with the guy draped on his back. Look, he he gets it. the defender even gets his hand on the ball and jars it loose a little bit. Well, look, he's juggling it. But he comes up with it. Big time clutch first down. Doesn't let it hit the ground. That's what you like. Again, Deontay Johnson is a salesman. This is going against off coverage here at the bottom. And you don't have to be fast to be able to be a deep threat. The reason why you're a deep threat is because you can threaten the guys to go deep. It's not just a speed that threatens. It's your routes. If you make it seem like you're going vertical every time, you're going to be a deep threat. And sometimes when I showed you how he snaps them off after threatening deep, sometimes they expect you to snap them off because you're making Every time look like you're running vertical. So sometimes they'll be like, okay, he's not running vertical this time. Let me make sure I break on whatever. And you can catch them flat-footed when they expect you to run a, a, a comeback or a curl. And this time, he's going to run, sell it again, open up the guy's hips outside. The guy thinks he's going to get on his horse or break. Boom, comes back inside. The guy has to hold him. No flag there, but the guy had to hold him. Otherwise, he was beat. Watch this. Boom. Look, if he doesn't grab him, this guy can't turn his hips. He sets him up outside, makes him do a complete turn. He may have some safety help over the top, but look, you sell it vertical, make sure you go outside, boom, come back inside on that post, that skinny post. Look, when you, you sell him outside, you know you're coming back inside, so sell him. Make him think you're going vertical. Boom, come back inside. Look, he missed him that time on the post. He could have hit him. Uh, it, it, it missed, they didn't miss that call, but it is what it is. So this time, Deontay's going to be up top. The same thing. You don't have to be a burner to be a deep threat. Watch him. He's going to sell it, make everything look like he's running outside. Look, as soon as that corner opens up those hips to turn and run like he's running down the sideline, boom, come inside on the post. Look at that. Make him flip his hips, eating up that cushion. Look, because look at all that cushion he has. He's not a burner. But he can eat up the cushion fast, gets on top of the corner. Once you get that close to him and you're making your break, it makes him uncomfortable. And so look at him stick that foot in the ground. Stick that foot in the ground. As soon as he see those hips turn, hips turn, hips turn, stick that foot in the ground. Sell it vertical. Look at it. Sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it. Boom. And it, look, that would have been a touchdown. Had the quarterback not gotten sacked or a free run or whatever, there's nobody over the top. The, safe, the corner was two to three yards of separation. The corner's done. He's looking in the backfield. He's done. But that's what Deontay does, man. He sells every route. Whether I, look, think, about, think about all the clips I showed you. Whether it was a slant, an out route, a curl route, or a post, he's selling it like it's a vertical route down the sideline and making these corners commit. As soon as they commit, he's blowing by, by him, man. This is, this is a guy... He's going to be able to help us out and get open, man. I love what he brings to the offense. All right, so let's try one where he actually gets the ball and gets deep. So let's run. he's going to be at the top of the screen. This time he's not going to be off coverage. He's going to be against press, but he's going to run a post and win with inside leverage. Watch him off the line win. Boom, get inside position. He leans a little bit, and that little lean ends up making him run into his own defender. That creates space. Ball's right on his chest. Like I said, he's not a burner, but he's fast enough to make things happen. He can get deep and be a deep threat. You don't have to be a burner to be a deep threat. I'm going to keep saying it, but look at this. He creates space at the top of it. Boom, right off the break. Now he has the space, and he's off to the races. Quarterback puts it right on him, and we work it.
You don't have to be a burner to be able to be a deep threat. But as you can see, Deontay Johnson, man, is a guy that is twitchy. He can get open. He can separate. And we need that type of separation in this Panthers offense terribly, terribly, terribly. This is to stop them from going for a receiver in the draft. I, I would love for them to even double dip at wide receiver in this draft just to spoil this offense with weapons that way they can actually get to somewhere functional and they can actually evaluate Bryce Young as a quarterback. Last year was so dysfunctional, such a lack of talent that it's hard to even pick out who was good, who was bad from a receiver, even receiver standpoint and from a quarterback standpoint. So I'm excited about the prospects. I'm excited about the upside here. Hopefully Dave can now who is baby Pete Carroll can help get his mind right and build a culture in a locker room that a guy like Deontay Johnson wants to be here and wants to thrive in. We'll see what happens. The Panthers probably won't sign him to an extension right away, of course, but getting him in here a year to be in the offense and work with the system, you have your eyes on him. You can put your hands on him and make him earn that money. And like I said, hopefully he'll be motivated and we can get the best out of Deontay. You guys let me know down below in the comments how you feel about this move for Deontay now that we've got him and you've seen the film. What do you think his expectations are for him? What do you think his stats will be in this new office? Because he's probably going to be wide receiver one. So let me know how you guys feel down below. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you are subscribed. Peace.